Hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? Concentrate, take screenshots. Why? Because of today, we'll be learning about global air circulation. Yes, how the air rotates or moves around Earth. All right, most people know the Earth as a round shape, but then as geography learners and teachers, we know that it is in a spherical shape, meaning it has uneven it is in an uneven shape not a straight a round shape which they portray to be okay and to fully understand air circulations we have to draw our round earth yes this is our earth right okay our earth consists of invisible lines which are called longitudes and latitude but then because of today we'll be learning about air circulation this means we'll only concentrate on latitude because of the air circulation changes each and every 30 degree latitude whether south or north all right so our first latitude will be the invisible line which separates the earth which is known as the equator which separates the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere yes the equator consists of the zero degrees why it's zero degrees because of the equator receives direct sun radiation or we could say direct insulation meaning the equator has the low pressure and we know that an area that has a low pressure the air has to ascend right so in the equator the air is ascending and when the air is ascending it will reach a layer which we call the tropopause this is the layer which we call the tropopause right as the warm air rises and reaches the tropopause it will obviously do what diverge the air will diverge because of the tropopause right and as the air diverges it will obviously cool off because of we know the higher you go the colder it gets so as the warm air cools it will obviously ascend this air will ascend and where is it ascending it is ascending on a line which consists of 30 degrees celsius right so we now know that the earth consists of zero degrees 30 degrees then we have to continue all right but we know that the 30 degrees this means now we are on a high pressure this was what a low pressure now we are on a high pressure when we are on 30 degrees okay remember the cold air is, is the one that it has now descended so this cold air will obviously stay on earth until it converges with another air or it receives direct insulation from the sun and it will obviously happen when we reach our 60 degree mark this is the 60 degree mark remember this is southern hemisphere right 30 degrees south 60 degrees south so now what do we have here when the air converges or when there's another insulation this will obviously mean the air will rise again the air is now rising right as the air rises it will obviously do what diverge diverge right as the air is diverging it will obviously arrive to a point where it has to sink because of the higher you go the colder it gets so when it sinks it obviously causes the what we call a high pressure so it will cause what we call a high pressure because of now there is cold air descending towards earth so there's a high pressure now this is no pressure because of the air is ascending all right so now we know the air circulation how is the air circulating around these latitudes yes and we write our 90 degrees south there all right remember what we have done down here it is definitely the same up here it will obviously mean there will be high pressure low pressure right this is what we do right we know that there is high pressure low pressure and a high pressure why does the cold areas consist of high pressure because of we know that they do not receive 
direct insulation from the sun. Meaning the air there, it is heavy, cold, dense, it is always sinking. All right, we know that air moves from high pressure to low pressure, right? We know that, that our air moves from high pressure to low pressure. If you do not know that, watch the video I dropped before this one because of we are moving forward now. All right, now that we know the pressures within the earth, this will definitely mean we now have to understand the areas between zero to 30, 30 to 60 and 60 to 90. All right, we know that the zero, it is called the equatorial low pressure belt, right? This is our equatorial low pressure belt. I do not have a space here, low pressure, belt equatorial low pressure belt and here we have our subtropical high pressure right our subtropical high pressure right and between 30 to 60 we have our sub polar yes sub polar this is our sub polar and between 60 to 90 we have our polar this is our polar high pressure Bells. All right. And what do we call these things on the side? We gave them names. They have names. This is called a Hadley cell. And this is called our Farrell cell. And this is called your homework. Get what this is called. All right. Let's continue. How does the wind move? This is the part we've been waiting for. The wind is pushed by the force which we call a Coriolis force. This force determines how the air has to move or rotate according to the rotation of the earth. We know that Coriolis force, it is not strong between the five, zero to five degrees. Coriolis force can never be possible between zero to five degrees. Meaning at the equator, at the center, there is less wind there. All right, let's continue. Okay, from the five degree mark, north or south, the Coriolis force starts to kick in. And then it affects the movement of the wind. In the northern hemisphere, the wind will move to the left. And in the southern hemisphere, the wind will move to the right. All right, let me throw it down so that you could understand. All right, we know very well that in the sub tropical high pressure we have tropical easterlies they look like this right these are what we call tropical easterlies why tropical easterlies when they look like they are looking or facing west because of we name the wind according to where they are coming from so they are coming from the east that's why we call them tropical easterlies meaning this side it has to obviously look like this it has to look like this have to look like this right so these are the tropical easterlies all right what about between 30 to 60 which winds do we have there we have westerlies yes westerlies this is where i stay this is where south africa is we find westerlies how do westerlies move they move like this right like this right they are moving from the west to the east that's why they are called westerlies and remember why are they facing down because of air pressure decreases or moves from a high pressure to low pressure from a high pressure to low pressure that's why it's moving from a high pressure to low pressure where there is an equator right then we are going down there what is the wind which we'll be finding down there it is what we call the polar easterlies yes the polar easterlies are very nice and friendly this is how they move they are moving like this this is our polar easterlies you can have it even like this this side and even like this this side right so this is how you draw the global air circulation you have to have the cells you have to know the pressure the high pressure low pressure you have to know the areas between 0 to 30 you find our subtropical high between 30 to 60 you find your subpolar low pressure between 60 to 90 you find your polar high pressure 
belt. All right. So this is how you understand air circulation. Okay. Let's now subscribe, like the video, because of we are moving to mid-latitude cyclone and even tropical cyclones. Okay.